Welcome back to Blue Night Crossover. PJ still your host, still sporting this. Chen Kong Plus. Wait, my turn. I gotta show here. something to you. What are you doing? Wait. Mike's in the festive spirit as well, I guess. I got, I got, I'm feeling it too. What Ready? What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, I'll, it's show gonna take I'll show you later. All right, whatever. And we got our special guest, Cedric. So, where, where he just came from isn't really that wintry. Because he came from the Philippines. Philippines. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're going to talk about the, his experience in the Philippines. He's been playing there for, what, two years now? Two years now, yeah. Mapua. Shout out to Mapua. Shout out to CJ. Yeah, oh, yeah. CJ. That's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> but yeah, we're just going to talk. We're just going to get real with it. Talk about basketball in the Philippines, his experience. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. How did you get on Mapua? And how was that experience like trying to find the team, I guess? Or trying yeah, out for the so team? I was out here playing for Tito Eddie Samir's team, 25 mm -hmm. for Life. So you tell me. You know, if I want to go out, so yeah, I told him I'm interested in going out playing the Philippines. So he helped me, you know, get some schools together to advise me which schools to go to, get in contact with his contacts, right, to, to help me, you know, find a find a good place for me. So we got to try out the schools, and we, you know, Mapu was one of them. So I got there, saw CJ, mm -hmm. fellow Canadian, right. Okay. So yep. you know, that's what really sold it for me, right. So CJ being there, like, to help you, guide you through the process that. You know he's been through it all by, by mm -hmm. himself to so help you show the ropes. That's just what solidified it for me to, to go to Mapua, really. You know, it was comfortable for you. What did CJ um, give to you? Or like, what advice did he give to you before you made your decision? Because I guess you had to think it over still, yeah. whether you're gonna go through it or not. What did CJ tell you that was like, oh, sh okay, yeah, I'll just go through with it? Like, well, like he said, he just said, like, yo, man, honestly, if ever you need help, like, or advice, you know, you need someone to show you the ropes, I'm, I'm here for you, you know, just to help you through my experiences. You know, being here by myself kind of thing, you know, I just want to go out there and help the youth or someone else coming in to not go through what I've been through, but just help guide them make the right decision. So, like, once mm -hmm. he said that, I just feel like, you know, this is real, man. Like, mm -hmm. he's really out there just trying to help me for the better good, right? So, mm -hmm. after that, that just kind of sold it for me. Yeah. We, um, we recently went to the Philippines in September. Yeah. We saw the UAAP environment. Tell us about the NCAA environment, because there's that those those two leagues, right? Yeah, UAEP, yeah. which is big, and then you have the NCAA, and you have like the big powerhouses like what San Beda and stuff yeah. like that. So tell about uh, tell us about the the difference, the dif not the di yeah, the or difference, maybe the uh, uh, yeah the vibe, the vibe. I guess. So, yeah. well, UAEP schools are bigger schools, mm. right? But yeah. I would say the NCAA is the the very first collegiate, you know, tournament or league in the Philippines. So it's one of the oldest. So basically. All those UAP schools used to be in that NCAA schools mm -hmm. way back in the 70s until they, they broke up, right? Yeah. But the atmosphere is all the same. The passion's all the same with the schools, right? So you still get the drums. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys feel the drums? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You still get the drums. So oh that's, that just God. changes it already, the yeah. atmosphere. You get the, dr yeah. the drums and the pride of the school with the, you know, the student body cheering. So you still have it all. It's all the same, really. Mm -hmm. It's just, I guess... They're just in different leagues. Some mm -hmm. call the UAP the pretty boy league, you know. <laughs> yeah. the, what do they call it? Because they get more broad, like they, you know, they're, they're just a bigger league, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. I just feel like, yeah, it's, they call that the pretty boy league. I don't know. That's what my teammates say. So yeah. I, I just, I'm just quoting them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a tournament where, because I know the preseason where you guys get to face UAP mm, teams. Yeah, yeah. Like what's that? Like what's That's uh, the yeah. Flying V. Oh, okay. Flying yeah. V Phil Oil preseason tournament. So yeah. that's the, oh. all the UAP schools, all yeah. NCAA schools. Yeah. So yeah, we, we get to play against CF schools. We actually against FU, oh, RJ. Okay. Oh, yeah. you know, they came out with the W, but you know, me and RJ yeah. still did our thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're still good. We're still good friends. <laughs> we still did our thing. <laughs> Talk about, I guess, like, I guess, so your experiences. What was your first, um, you first got to the Philippines. Do you, did you go often to the Philippines? Like, how was it, um, a, like, assimilating, assimil do you speak Tagalog? Do you, mm. like, what was the culture shock to you and how did you try to fit in? Yeah, so, yeah. I, we, me, and my, me and my family go there, mm -hmm. go there often. Yeah. Maybe three, three, four, every three years, four years, okay. right? Yeah. So uh, we, we go there often. So I'm kind of accustomed to what the culture is out there. So it's no shock for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, when you're having your parents on that TFC, like, <laughs> oh. all day, every yeah. day, yeah. right? So it's, it's kind of not it's hard for me to adjust, right? And yeah. plus, I understand Tagalog fluently. They talk to me, but mm -hmm. I just can't really speak it back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it wasn't that hard for me to adjust. But I just feel like, you know, being there so much, so often, having your parents be exposed to it on TV, I just feel like it's much easier yeah, adjustment, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But it's better said than done, right? Because yeah, being yeah. there, it is different. Like, mm -hmm. it's a different culture. It's, it's, it's a culture shock. It's much different from growing up here. But mm -hmm. like I said, man, if it's something you really want, you're going to do the things that you ha you're not used to doing to, to accomplish, you know, your goals. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. right? What did you feel like the difference, the way basketball was played here in Canada, in terms of how they were played back home? What's the difference that you felt? 
uh, I, playing there? I feel like basketball there, it's, it's way more tough. I'm pretty mm. sure a lot of people say that, like, yeah. it's way more tough, it's more physical. F Filipino basketball, there's all about the fundamentals. Mm. You know, like, they focus on that, th on those things. But they just really, they're greedy, man. Mm. All up in your face, playing full court defense, physical, like, in tip-top shape. Like, I don't know if you guys seen it, very fast. Yeah. Very yeah. fast, yeah. pressing the whole game, right? Yeah. Mm. And then, but they're just very fundamentally sound. Like, they can knock down the three-point shot. You know, drip, everyone can dribble the rock, big mm -hmm. man to small man, they could do it all, right? Mm -hmm. But the, I just think that the games are different because out here, you could say it's, you know, we dribble a lot more over here. Yeah, over yeah. there, it's really like, they don't want you dribbling. They want the ball moving for you to go transition all the time, fast break. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the systems are different. The coaching style is much different. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for, for kids growing up here, it's going to take some time adjusting to, mm -hmm. but it's going to take the right coach and the right program to really fit you, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Really t uh, really expand on that point. What do you mean by um, the coaching styles and, like, talk about the politics, I guess, mm -hmm. or um, what do you mean by choosing the right program? Like, oh, I get to play on uh, Ateneo, yeah. yeah. Or, like, what does that mean? Like, if someone like Ateneo recruits me, isn't that a good thing, I guess? Yo, it's a good thing, yeah. right? But, like, those kind of schools, Ateneo La Salle, right? They're, mm. they're the biggest schools. Mm. They have the most money, mm. so they have the most funding. But those type of schools can afford to get any, all those players, yeah. give them all the money, whatever, all the whatever, promise, all that, just to have them in their Team B pool, right? But mm. it's not for sure you're going to... If you don't show improvement or pan out your... Like your p potential, mm -hmm. there's no promise you're gonna go team A, or and then the politics come in, right? Yeah. If you're not, if you don't know anyone big close to the team manager or the management of the school or to mm -hmm. the head coaching staff, yeah. it's not really for sure you're gonna get on the team. Maybe you might get lined up. It's not for yeah. sure you're gonna play, right? Now, yeah. it's a problem. It's gonna be a difficulty to get lined up. The next problem is getting playing time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. maybe it's good that. Yo, you know Ateneo is being a good school saying, oh, they want, they recruiting you yeah. to want to play, but they can afford to get all the best players and yeah. not line you up. And then yeah. after two years, they don't like what they see, they just give you away. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's very important to, to know the details mm -hmm. when you get to a school or get in college school, it's asking them, like, am I going to play? Mm -hmm. First off, that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. Am I going to play? You know, I want to see how the coaching style is. You know, am I going to mesh with this coaching style, the mm -hmm. coaching style or with the team? Or mm -hmm. with just the school in general, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they, I really say, like, you have to find a, a good fit for you, mm -hmm. for what school, what team. Just doesn't mm -hmm. the, what the names don't really matter anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you really promise to play, because that's all. That's what it's really about, right? Yeah, you, you have, have to painter. showcase your yes. your skills. Um, what was your um, first playing year like, and what are your goals coming? Because this is your second and mm -hmm. final year. So what's your, I guess, your objective now? Where do you want to go with your stats, or what do you want to see yourself do in this yeah. coming year? Definitely. Uh, well, my first year, it was going well in the preseason for me in the Flying V tournament. I was mm -hmm. playing well, but uh, I played the opening game in Moa. That's, that's kind of oh, like a dream come true yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Been, yeah. yeah, my parents were there courtside. It's kind of like, wow. you know, how you would just imagine it. Yeah. Played, played the opening game there, and then I got hurt second oh, game. Dude. I got a hairline stress fracture on my right foot. So, you yeah. know, that's, that wasn't planned. You know, you don't yeah, plan those things. Yeah. So yeah. I went through the... The rehab, the therapy, I got uh, injected with PRP, which is stem cells. Oh. So it kind of boosted the uh, me my healing no process. Proper. So I yeah, I, yeah. I could I came back second round. So got to play second round, you know, got to get back into the groove and then start playing well near the end of the second round. So I I closed it off well. Yeah. But obviously going into the next season, I I want to stay healthy, mm -hmm. not just stay healthy. I want to be in tip top shape because you really got to be in tip top shape to perform or exactly. you know mm -hmm. get get the numbers. So. That's pretty much it. Stay healthy, be in tip-top shape, and just, I guess, be a leader to have my chance to show out. It's going to be my last year, mm -hmm. right? So have a chance to really show out, showcase, and really just do it, show them I can do it all, like play defense, score, mm -hmm. lead a team. I really just want to get it all, like rebounds, assists, mm -hmm. points, just do it all, really. Yeah. To showcase you can, I'm, I'm everything. Yeah. Uh, last like, thing I want to, you know, ask for you, because a lot of, you know, Filipino, Canadian out here wants to get out there and see what it's like playing. In the Philippines, what would be your advice coming into the game, the the, the environment in the Philippines, the the coaching, the, the team? Tell us like what would be your advice to them in terms of all these different aspects 
coming into it and playing in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. If you had another Cedric yeah. tapping on your soldier, just like how CJ was there for you, yeah, yeah, what yeah. would you pass down to another Cedric kind of saying, yeah. Oh, kuya! Yeah. <laughs> like everything, what, what would be like Philippines? from Give the beginning, advice. choosing, yeah. to getting into the Philippines, to playing, to the right, to the coaching, to yeah. the... Yeah. What would be like, you know, your ultimate advice to them? I would say first, like, ask them if you've ever been to the Philippines, right? Because first yeah. off, you got to be... You gotta go there to know if can you can you live there, that's true. Yeah, right? Yeah. So that's number one. Like I would say, you know, are you accustomed to living there? Can you live there? Yeah. You know, can you live away from your family and friends? Mm. Can oh, you handle yeah, that pressure? Yeah, yeah. That's number sometimes the number one that that brings people back is yeah. being homesick, right? Mm. So that's probably number one is mm. if, if they can handle living there or being away from their family. Mm -hmm. Number two would be like you said, finding the right school, mm -hmm. yeah. like finding the right school for them to, to help fit their, their game or help them expose them the best way they can, right? Because at the end of the day, it's all about exposure, mm -hmm. game, playing time, to showcase your talent, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to get to the next level because that's, that's where everyone's trying to go to. That's yeah. all our dreams. We're all just trying to go to the PBA, right? So, that's true. Yeah. And that's just how it is. And then thirdly, maybe, can, can you handle the game? Can you handle the... Can you play? Can you play, right? <laughs> yeah. can you play? I can ask you too. I, I want to go to the movies. Yeah, but can you yeah. play? You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. But no, honestly, like, yeah. can you handle that type of style of play? Yeah. Like being fast, up and down, yeah. Phys the physicality of it, like yeah. being that physical. Can you handle playing under that pressure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, some players can, can play in the practice, but it's different. It's yeah, different yeah. when it's yeah. game time, when the lights are on, the, the cameras are on, the yeah. drums are playing. I'm yeah. CJ used to tell me, it's different playing in the NC, man. When yeah. the drums start playing, and he's right, I promise yeah. you that. It's right. The atmosphere is different. Yeah. So I guess being accustomed to that kind of atmosphere, can you adjust yeah. quick enough to, to you know, showcase that you're not scared, that you, you know, you're confident in yourself and your game? Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much it. Man. You got to be ready. Those yeah. are good three pieces of advice. Yeah. So make sure you listen up. That ends our interview with Cedric. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you for coming by, my thank man. Thank you guys for having me. Uh,